It's no secret I've been a huge fan of Rich Harris for a while. His talks have been one of the biggest inspirations for me even making this channel. He showed me what it looks like to be a web dev that cares on a deeper level, both about design and the underlying architecture of the web itself. That all said, I've never been the biggest fan of Svelte. I know that sounds crazy. How can I love Rich and not love Svelte? I don't like when people change the syntax of JavaScript without really, really good reason. And historically, let has meant something very different in Svelte than it does in any other use of JavaScript. And the dollar sign syntax, as powerful as it can be, was never my favorite thing. That all said, Svelte 5 seems to be a very promising release and Rich hit me up for my thoughts. And rather than just quickly look over the blog and send that to him, I've decided I want to show you all what I think with my honest reaction going through this blog. Now I'm supposed to be at GraphQL conf right now, I'm going to be late, but I think this is for a good reason. I'm so hyped for Svelte 5. Let's see what Rich has cooked up here and the rest of the team. I know there's a lot of hard working people now. Introducing runes. Uh, it's not a term I've heard before for web stuff, so I'm very curious now. In 2019, Svelte 3 turned JavaScript into a reactive language. That talk, by the way, is one of my like all-time favorite talks when he initially revealed Svelte 3. So if you haven't already checked that out, please do. I'm sure we'll link those in the description somewhere. And here's the example. Let count equal zero, and then when you increment count with this button on click binding, it will update the UI. This seems very simple, but to me it's confusing because nothing tells me that when something changes here, it's going to update the markup here. And I like how in React this is a little more explicit. That said, this is really powerful. Yeah because the compiler can see where count is referenced, the generated code can be highly efficient. And because we're hijacking syntax like let and equals, instead of using cumbersome APIs, you can write less code. At least they're embracing that they hijack those. Oh, <laughs> I wish I could write all my JavaScript like this. Svelte 5 changes all of that with runes. Before we begin, even though we're changing how things work under the hood, Svelte 5 should be a drop-in replacement for almost everything. The new features are opt-in. Your existing components will continue to work. We don't yet have a release date for Svelte 5. What we're showing you here is a work in progress that is likely to change. What are runes? Runes are symbols that influence the Svelte compiler. Whereas today Svelte uses let equals and exports and the dollar sign labels, rune uses function syntax to achieve the same thing. Aha, here, here is, this This was my issue with Svelte before, is that tracking where these updates come from when it's just using JavaScript syntax gets really, really tricky. And now, with this new syntax, it becomes much clearer where the update starts. Yeah, having code behave one way inside of a .svelte and another inside of a .js can make it hard to refactor. So now if you break something out into a JS file and use this new syntax, it makes it clearer what is and isn't composable, writable, and triggers updates. Okay, you have my interest. Reactivity extends beyond the boundaries of your .svelte files. Yes. Okay. That's pretty weird. With runes, it's much simpler. Ah. Oh. Yeah. As he had mentioned, the big change here is that you don't need to use Svelte's traditional like store when you want to break things outside of Svelte. Previously, if you wanted the benefits of Svelte's syntax, you had to either do it in the file or do a complex store externally. This lets you have a lot of the same benefits when you're not working inside of a Svelte file. Runtime reactivity. Today, Svelte uses compile time reactivity. That means that if you have some code that uses the dollar sign label to rerun automatically when dependencies change, those dependencies are determined when Svelte compiles your component. This works well until it doesn't. So we change this code. It takes in width, multiplies width and height. Because dollar sign area declaration can only see width, it won't be recalculated when height changes. Oof. Yeah. Svelte's becoming React. <laughs> Not literally, like obviously this is very different, but there's a reason React was designed to blast everything out on every change. It was to avoid a lot of these issues, but I do like this idea of a derived value and an effect that runs when values change. This honestly looks more like solid than anything, but I'm seeing seeing the vision here. State derived, yep, and it also this is the big deal. You can now leave .svelte files and still have all of these powers. Like every other framework, we've come to the realization Knockout was right all along. Svelte reactivity is powered by signals, which are essentially what Knockout was doing then. More recently, signals have been popularized by Solid and adopting a multitude or adopted by a multitude of other frameworks. Yeah, this this feels like Solid mode. 
doing things a bit differently. Signals are an under the hood implementation detail rather than something you interact with directly. As such, we don't have the same API design constraints. It can maximize both efficiency and ergonomics. I can, I, I'm reading this in Rich Harris's voice. This is very interesting. For example, we avoid the narrow or the type narrowing issues that arise when values are accessed by function calls. And when compiling the server side rendering mode, we can ditch the signals altogether. This is a really powerful piece. When you're server side rendering, these things can't change because you're doing one pass and then sending the content to the user. So skipping over all of this lets you go super fast. Simpler times ahead. Runes are an additive feature, but they make a whole bunch of existing concepts obsolete. Oh, this was a weird one. Export let was very strange. Did not love the dollar sign. All of his attendant quirks. I, oh. This is a list of my least favorite parts of Svelte, and these are all gone. Okay. <laughs> we have a long list of ideas that for subsequent releases that will make Svelte simpler and more capable. I'm sold. I really want to play with this. I don't have time right now because, again, I'm late. Like I should have gotten an Uber 10 minutes ago. But goddamn, this looks really cool. I'm genuinely hyped to take a look as soon as I can. I know signals aren't necessarily the best understood concept, but they are really cool and powerful. And as a solid nerd, I, I couldn't be more hyped. This feels like a lot of my favorite ideas from different places coming together. And I'm definitely going to give Svelte another look after this. Should I do more content about Svelte? Should I do a video where I play with Svelte 5? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to hear more about my thoughts on how to pick a JavaScript framework right now, I'll put in that video in the corner because that's almost certainly out of date too. Still has really good info though. Thank you guys as always. I really appreciate y'all. Peace nerds.